Welcome to Monster Art Monday. My name is Sean D. Skellington. Every Monday I'm here for you, painting monsters and tailing the tails. So do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, and let's get into it. Today, we're getting into one of my favorite characters, Nosferatu. A lot of people know who Nosferatu is, but not necessarily know his story, so I am going to share the knowledge. For starters, Nosferatu is a ripoff of Bram Stoker's Dracula. The novel came out in 1897, and the movie was created in 1922 during the silent film era. The film was directed by German expressionist horror director F.W. Marnu. Marnu stated multiple times that he had met an actual vampire or a guy who claimed to be in a country bar tavern type thing back in the day. And it inspired him to bring it to the silent silver screen. Uh, you might remember in my Frankenstein video I talked about how Mary Shelley and her homies created Dracula. I was actually a little bit wrong on that. They wrote a short story called The Vampire, which 70 years later inspired Bram Stoker's to create Dracula. F.W. Marnu was obviously heavily inspired by this novel, uh, so much so that he just basically took the premise of the book and changed the names and locations around and called it a movie. Some of the things notably that he changed were the names. Count Dracula was changed to Count Oleg. Um, it was, the location was changed to Germany, to Winsburg, Germany. Um, at the time, uh, Brand Strokers had already passed. He died, dead. Uh, Bram Stoker's wife, uh, Florence, heard about Nosferatu and was like, Nosfer what? Nosfer hell no. And she sued the fuck out of him. And she would win. The company would ultimately go bankrupt and not make another film. And the court even ordered that all of the remaining films, copies of the films, would be burned destroyed but you know people that love the movie were like nah fuck that um if you guys haven't seen the actual film um again it is a silent film it was created in 1922 and the basic synopsis for the movie is that count Oleg uh is buying a house in winsburg count Oleg is played by max shrek who we'll go into later there's a lot of controversy and uh, myths and rumors about Max. In the film, there's a character called Thomas Hutler, played by, oh, I'm gonna fuck this up, Gustav von Wagenhelm? Wagen, Wagen, Wagenhelm? I don't know, man, I'm not German. In the story, uh, his boss sends him to Count Oleg. Um, as he's traveling, because this is like, you know, based in the 1800s, he is in a wagon with horses and shit. He stops by a local tavern. They give him like warnings, you know, they, they tell him there's a werewolf on the prowl and that, you know, they, he finds a book about vampires. There's a lot of, you know, people hype him up. They're like, yo, where are you going? Count Oleg's castle? And Anyways, he meets Count Oleg. Uh, they, you know, go over their paperwork. Oleg's acting like fucking super shady. They're having dinner. Um, Thomas ends up cutting his finger. Oleg tries to, like, suck his fucking finger. <laughs> it's, like, super weird. Um, this dude's like, yo, this shit is shady, man. Uh, he ends up going to his room the next day. He's, like, walking around the castle. It's, like, almost deserted. Nothing's going on. He ends up uh, getting suspicions that Olaf is a vampire. He goes down into the basement, finds some caskets, opens it up. There's fucking Nosferatu fucking chilling in there. And um, he's like, fuck this, I'm bouncing. He ends up trying to like escape the castle through a window, falls, fucks himself up, wakes up in the hospital. Uh, but but Olaf had already signed the papers. 
And get this, the house that he bought was right across the street from Thomas. Just kind of like in Dracula. But then he ends up like taking all his fucking caskets, putting them on a boat, goes down the river. Everybody in the ship ends up dying. They blame it on the plague. Olak takes his caskets off in the middle of the night, goes to his new pad. Um, Thomas had a wife. Earlier in the movie, uh, Thomas also shows Count Olak a picture of his wife, Ellen, and he's like, yo, she's got a nice neck. So anyways, he moves across the street. Uh, Oleg is like creeping around all the time, sneaking under beds, doing all kinds of shady shit. He ends up biting Ellen. And she's dying. There's like a whole like thing to it. And then sunlight comes. Poof. He's dead. This is actually the first film where sunlight is actually fatal to vampires. In all short stories and anything before this. Um, even in Bram Stoker's Dracula, like, sun weakens vampires, makes them uncomfortable, but didn't, it wasn't fatal. But in this movie, you're done. You're done. You're done. So yeah, that's kind of the basic story, kind of, you know, obviously super similar to Bram Stoker's Dracula. You know, one of the first cult films, because so many of the films were destroyed, as I said, um, that people really had to keep it alive making copies pushing it through time so we can enjoy it now um let's get into max shrek he was the actor who played uh nosferatu count olick uh, to me he kind of looks like a hairless rabbit he has that his teeth are like right in the front and his ears are like Psh. um i love painting him I, I think the look is iconic super fucking cool um, there were a lot of spin-offs, cartoons, movies, comics, all kinds of shit that was actually a spin-off of essentially the first spin-off. And, um, I'm just gonna give you three because, like I said, it's my fucking channel. I do what I want. The first one would be in 1979, Stephen King, uh, did a mini TV series called Salem's Lot. Uh, based around the Nosferatu story and character, and it's pretty fucking dope. So check it out. Number two would be Shadow of the Vampire, filmed in the year 2000, starred William Dafoe um, and the other guy, John Malkovich, I believe. Uh, and that movie is really cool because it's based around uh, Max Schreck, who you know was the actor who played Count Olick. Uh, a lot of people, there's been a lot of rumors, stories that that dude was actually a vampire, you know? That Marnu found him and was like, yo, let's fucking film it. Um, it's a really cool film. Check it out. Check it out. Because why not? And then my third favorite cameo spinoff thing doesn't really uh, involve his story so much as... It's just an homage to him, and that would be what we do in the shadows. Came out in 2014. There's a character named Peter, who is essentially Los Ferratu. But yeah, it was uh, it was a ripoff, and sometimes people we like the ripoffs. We like adding to the vampire universe. So I don't know. Nosferatu's dope in my book. If you like this and you want to go down a rabbit hole, I also do a lot of other things. I have a podcast called Necroelectric. I have a band called Last Nail in the Coffin. I host a art contest called Paintbrush Social Club. And if you're ever in Waco, Texas, stop by our store, Skellington Curiosities. And I will see you next time. Yeah, Bye.